Hey church. Hey. We're so glad you're joining us today. We're in a series called Every One. Yeah, our hope in this series is to communicate God's heart for all of humanity, but also for you individually, hence every and one. So we hope this week's message is a blessing to you. God bless you. Well, hey, we've been doing a series called Every One. Can y'all say Every One? Now, our heart in this series, uh, if you don't remember this, is that God has a heart. He loves all of humanity. Can y'all say all of humanity? But he also loves you individually, and that's real. That's real. That, that you don't get lost in the mix. That you individually and personally actually matter to God. And I mean that. I'm not just saying that. Sometimes we just say stuff, and it's like these pretty cliches, like, God loves me, <laughs> you know? And yeah, God loves you, but that's real, and it's a truth, and I want to tap into that here this morning. So, what we're going to talk about is that God wants, can y'all say wants? That is an important word today. Let's say it again, wants. He wants to take care of every one of your needs. He wants. Can y'all say wants again? Again, that is an important word. He is not just obligated. We are not an inconvenience to him. God wants. What does he do? He wants to take care of of every one of your needs. So we're gonna kinda dive into a couple different perspectives of this truth. Uh, how many of y'all think it's fun to walk along these Jesus journeys that we have in scripture? Yeah? Y'all cool to go on a Jesus journey with me? And we're gonna look at a couple people who interacted with Jesus while he was here walking around on the earth uh, and just really glean from what they did, how they acted with him, all of that stuff. So. Y'all ready? Here we go. In the beginning. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> we ain't going to Genesis today. I mean, maybe. But, so Jesus, can y'all say Jesus? Jesus, when he was here on earth, uh, basically anytime he was out preaching or, or praying for the sick, all that stuff, crowds would assemble. Have y'all read that in scripture before? That he would be speaking words of life and people would be like, oh, there's something about these words and so they would go to him they'd be like wow Jesus we really want what you have and so crowds would assemble right large crowds that were drawn to him it wasn't just hype right it wasn't just hype church I never want our church to be about hype amen I don't want our church to be about hype I know sometimes I'm like are y'all alive are y'all alive? Are y'all alive? But that's not just about hype. That's about, can we realize, can we take a moment to tap into maybe what God wants to show us here today? Right? Ain't that where we want to live? And I want it to be that people come here through these doors and are confronted with the love of God that changes their lives in wild ways that we can't even imagine. That's the draw of our church. Amen? The life, love, power of Jesus Christ is going to be what transforms this church and transforms Menominee, Wisconsin. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Dope. So, Jesus, he's great. I love Jesus. Man, I love that guy. He's just, oh, Jesus. So, Jesus, he's out. He's teaching some stuff to some people, as he does, right? And basically, he's like, all right, disciples, we're going to go on the other side of this lake here. They were on a seashore, and Jesus was just like, guys, let's go for a little boat ride, right? And so they go on the boat. Y'all might remember this story. They're on this boat ride. They're going to the other side. Uh, Jesus is sleeping because Jesus is chill, and he's sleeping, and all of his disciples are, you know, up in the middle of the night. They're watching out, you know, and a storm happens, right? And the waves are crashing, and these guys are like, oh, we're going to die, Jesus. Jesus gets up. And he gives, like, the loudest hush of the Bible. He's just like, hush! Sea, wind, storm. And guess what? Sea, wind, storm, hushes. It's just, like, flat, you know? Uh, so Jesus, he does all that. It's wild. It's awesome. Then they land in this place called the land of the Gerasenes. Can you all say the Gerasenes? 
Uh, so they get to this land, right? And there's this guy who's been in a graveyard, chained up. Every once in a while, he gets butt naked, and he happens to be possessed by demons. Everyday stuff, right? Well, he's there. And Jesus, I mean, how many of y'all, if you pulled up to shore, and you saw some wild dude chained up, right? Just like, I, I, I want to get you, you know, all that stuff. Like horror movie stuff, right? Like you see this guy? Like how many of y'all are going to go right to him? I mean, if that's you, props to you, man. I got, I got respect for you, you know? Like honestly, I'd probably be like, Kara, stay. <laughs> I love you. Hey, man, you know? Like I don't know what I would do. But Jesus, he ain't scared. He's just like, okay, I see you. You are a person who needs help. Right? That's what he sees. He sees a person who needs help. And so what does he do? He ain't, he's not afraid of him. He goes up to him. And sure enough, some more everyday in the life of Jesus stuff. He casts a legion of demons, is what it says. There's a legion of demons. That means a lot of demons inside of this guy. He casts them out. They go into some pigs. The pigs jump off a cliff. The pigs all die. The people are really upset about it. And they're like, Jesus, we want nothing to do with you. Interesting reaction, right? And so Jesus is like, okay. Y'all don't want anything to do with me. I'm not going to force myself on you. Jesus doesn't force himself on us, right? Right, church? Okay. So Jesus is like, okay, I'm going to go somewhere where I can have some influence. And so he gets back in the boat. They go back over the lake. And guess who's still there? The crowd. This crowd of people that he had left went out. He didn't say like BRB. When like, be right back, see you in 15. You know, he didn't do that. If you read in scripture, nowhere does he imply that he's going to be right back or he's coming right back. But still, he goes out. They don't want nothing to do with him. He comes back to this same crowd who's eagerly awaiting him, who want to see him move in their life. How many of y'all want to see Jesus move in your life? Okay. How many of y'all want to see Jesus move in your life? There's my church. Come on. Me too. Me too. I want to see Jesus shake this crowd up and do some stuff in us and through us. I tell you what, I don't even know what it's going to look like, but it's going to be awesome. So here we are. We arrive at the beginning of our story. Jesus has arrived upon the shore. There is a crowd that has been waiting for him, and there are two characters that I want to hone in on. First of all, the first character, let's start reading here. Mark 5, 22 through 24. Okay, so any words that are bold, I would appreciate it if y'all would read with me, okay? These are words that we are going to kind of emphasize and learn from, okay? So that's why we're all going to read it together. This says, one of the synagogue officials named Jairus came up, and on seeing him, fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Oh, you guys are so good. I was going to like, take a moment, you know? His daughter's at the point of death. How many of y'all would say this is a serious situation? Yeah? So now let's go. Please come and lay your hands on her so that she will get well and live. All right, so who is this dude? Jairus, the synagogue official. Well, he's a pretty famous cat. Um, he is a religious leader in the day. His face was probably well known in that area. And so he comes forward, and people know who he is, right? Um, something really interesting that I see in Jairus, in this synagogue official, um, is a bold humility. Did you hear what I said? A, a bold humility. Now, sometimes we don't think those words go hand in hand, right? Like, they sound like antonyms, like boldness and humility. Like, I thought humility was like, uh, uh, right? Like, that's what I think of when I think of humility, you know? Like, uh, you know? Boldness is like, right? There ain't even words for it. It's just like, here I am, you know? 
And so with Jairus, what I see is this guy that's coming in, and he is demanding, he is asking Jesus for specific attention in a sea of different needs. Right? How many of y'all think there were a lot of needs in that crowd? Probably a lot, right? That's probably why they're all there. And then this cat shows up, Jairus, and he's like, um, excuse me, Jesus, I need your attention. I have a situation. Please come to my house. You know what please come means? It means please leave this current place and come to my place. It is asking for God's specific attention. This means he is leaving the crowd for the one. Right? Isn't that what that means? Now, we might be like, again, our false concepts of humility and selfishness might make us go, who do you think you are, J. Iris? Who do you think you are, Mr. Prideful, selfish man, taking Jesus away from everybody? Right? Could y'all maybe think that? If not, I'm, you know, that's cool, that's good that you don't think that. But, you know, this guy comes in demanding attention. And so there's a few things in here that I feel like I just need to read. Um, when I was studying, I felt like God kind of gave me specific sentences that if I tried to communicate them just by memory or whatever or on the fly, it would not work. So here, um, it's not a matter of who do you think you are. It's a matter of what do you think God wants. Now, that's going to have a little bit of more weight in a moment. Again, we might see Jairus' actions as a weird brand of selflit or selfishness. This is actually selflessness. Okay? Now, let me explain. Again, we might think that Jairus' demand on Jesus' attention is selfish. Right? He's like, pay attention to me. Leave, huh, come, huh. Right? That could be misconstrued as selfish. But... To be selfish, would it not, would selfishness not be defined as holding something to yourself that God wants? Did you hear me? Selfishness is keeping something to yourself that God wants, right? Now, in Scripture, all throughout the New Testament, I see Jesus saying, come to me. I want your needs. I want to help you. Any area that you need me in your life, come to me. I want to take that stuff off of you. So to hold on to that stuff and be like, well, God, just maybe everybody else, but not me. I'm going to keep my own problems to myself. I'm not going to give them to God because maybe God doesn't have time for me. Maybe other people have bigger needs than me. Whatever it looks like, I want to tell you that's nonsense in a loving way. Can I say that lovingly? That's nonsense, but I love you. You know? If you think that holding your problems to yourself because you don't think God cares enough or whatever, that's selfish. God wants your needs. Give him your needs. That's selfless, and it's beautiful. He wants them. Give them to him. Watch him work and blow your mind. Amen? So, sometimes, I'm just going to keep reading this stuff. Sometimes in the name of a false brand of humility, we reserve what God wants from him. God wants your troubles. He desires for us to bring our sicknesses, pains, cares, anxieties. Hello! How many of y'all ever have some anxiety? Some of y'all are lying anxieties to him and let him take care of us us holding on to them and holding them back from him is to revoke him of his desire whoa us holding on to our baggage is revoking god of his desire so it is selfless to give him your stuff see sometimes we think like that's inconvenient because i don't want your stuff right I don't want your stuff. We can't handle each other's stuff, and so we look at people's stuff as inconvenience. But God wants your stuff because God can do something in your situation. 
He's the only one that we can put that kind of trust and that kind of weight in. You know, sometimes we give all this stuff over to people and friends and we're wondering why nothing changes. Now, don't get me wrong. Church is a place where we can edify each other, build one another up, and help one another, encourage one another. But the only reason we can do that here is because we point to Jesus. Jesus is the one helping. Jesus is the one we give our stuff to. Amen? And when we do so, it ain't selfish. So Jairus is not being selfish here by saying, Jesus, hold up, I need you right now. I need you to come with me. Please pay attention to me. Sometimes we're like, nah, don't pay attention to me, God. It's just little old me. That's not humility. That's a mockery. And I love you. (laughs) After I say really heavy things, I just feel like, I love you, though. Everything's going to be okay. You know? So, (laughs) humility is giving all of yourself. Can you say all of myself? All of yourself to God and letting him have his way, not belittling yourself and holding him back from what he wants. Did you hear me? I'm going to read that again. Some of y'all are like, what? It's a lot of words, bro. Humility, okay, I'm defining humility for you. Humility is giving all of yourself to God and letting him have his way not belittling yourself and holding back from God what he wants, okay? Y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Now, you want some scripture to prove it? I hope so, church! Hold your pastor accountable, right? You want some scripture? Okay, good. There they are. Good morning. 2 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5, lies, 1 Peter 5. Y'all ready to read with me? Therefore, humble yourselves under the, hand, or under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time. What does God do when we humble ourselves? He exalts us at the proper time. Ready to read? Casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. How do we humble ourselves? We cast all our anxieties on him. That is humility. Humility, being humble, is not going, God doesn't have time for me, I'm a worm. That's not humility. Humility is going, God, I need you, I know you want me, I'm all yours. That's humility. And that is how we humble ourselves. And check this out. I love it. This is not just for the sake of sakes. Because he cares for you. He desires you. He wants to help you. So we give him every aspect of ourselves. And in doing so, in the presentation of our need, regardless of what's going on around us, that is godly humility. And that is setting ourselves up to be flooded with his influence, his power in our situations. If you believe it, say amen. Amen. Woo! So, it's not humble to hold on to your stuff. Don't do that. We can enter into a bold humility. Can y'all say bold humility? You are a child of God. You are a child of God. That is real. Enter in, baby. Enter in. I am playing. Enter in. You are a child of God. You are worth so. Jesus died on a cross for you. You matter. You have worth. You have value because God loves you. Thanks, Anthony. That's good. Hit me back with it. He loves you too. I like that more than an amen. You too. You know? <laughs> so let's keep reading. Y'all ready to keep reading? Verse 24. And he went off with him. Jesus went. Jairus was like, Jesus, may I have your attention, please? And Jesus is like, yeah. Yeah. Jairus is like, you see all these people? Come with me. And Jesus is like, okay. You know? But this is what I like. I like this crowd's attitude, too. 
They're like, oh, you're going? We're going, you know? <laughs> like, 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 I love that. It's just like, they don't like respect Jesus, like leaving, going somewhere. They're just like, nope, nope, we're coming along for the ride, Jesus, you know? Like, that's, that's the epitome of sheep following the shepherd, right? They're just like, okay, Shay, shepherd, we're going to follow you, you know? And they're like pressing in around him. I love it. A large crowd was following him and pressing in on him. Now, sometimes I read my inconvenience or my attitude of inconvenience into Scripture, right? Like, this sounds, when I read this at first, I was like, that's annoying. Just being real. I was like, man, y'all need to just give Jesus some space. Let him go do his thing. But I love Jesus. That's not his attitude here because we see something going on in the next few verses. We're introduced to another person. So who is the first person? Jairus. You guys even remembered his name. Good job. Jairus, the synagogue official, right? The well-known cat, right? We're going to meet someone else. Mark 5, 25. A woman who had had a hemorrhage for 12 years and had endured much at the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was not helped at all but rather grown worse. Sorry, pause break. Physicians are not bad. You need to hear this. This sounds like stay away from those physicians, man. Let's talk about a situation where a specific person was not able to be helped by the physicians. Okay? Don't take this out of context. Turn it into some anti-doctor doctrine. Doctor doctrine. Doctor doctrine, you know? Don't do that. That's ridiculous. I mean, we have doctors in this church that I love and I appreciate. You know, sometimes going to the doctor is a good idea. You know, I've had some nasty stuff come out of my throat before. And you know what I did? I went to the doctor. I was like, yo, what is this jank? You know? And she's able to tell me what's going on. I loved it. So, anyways... Just felt like that needed to be clarified because that sounds like they're coming in kind of hot, you know. Uh, Verse 27. So this woman, after she had heard about Jesus, she came up in the crowd behind him. Can you all say behind him? And touched his cloak. For she thought, if I just touch his garments, I'll get well. Immediately, can you say immediately? The flow of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Let's just hold off for a minute. That's pretty cool. Right? Like, that's pretty cool. I just want to take a moment and be like, God, you're pretty cool. Isn't he, though? Man, just poof, dried up. Poof, I like that. So, Immediately, the flow of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Immediately, Jesus, perceiving in himself that the power proceeding from him had gone forth, he turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? Hmm. Now, do you think he was just upset because he had a super fly robe? Y'all get a stain on me? You know? Is that what's going on here? Okay, good. I'm glad that you don't think Jesus is ultra-concerned about stains. You know? I'm I'm ultra-concerned about stains, you know? Goodness gracious. Lord, help me, you know? So, side note. Good night. Let's move. Luke 8.45, this is said another way. And, And Jesus said, who is? What? Who is? Who is the one who touched me? He is in a crowd of people. He is on a specific journey. He is being pressed in from all sides. I love his, I I love his disciples' response here. They're like, really, Jesus? Who is the one who touched you? Bro, there's people surrounding you. Everybody's touching you, Jesus. What kind of sick joke is this? Don't ask me that. How am I supposed to answer that, Jesus? How about everyone? Every, everyone. Well, anyways. Who is the one who touched me? And while they were all denying it, everybody's like, one me, one me, one me. You know, I love that everybody's like afraid to own up to this. And the disciples were like, well, you know, it's hard to figure out. So, this woman, let's talk a little bit about her. Um, notice, first of all, she's not given a name in Scripture. 
Now, you could chum that up to just like the cultural norm of the day, right? Like just being real, women kind of got the shaft back in the day, okay? They weren't respected as well as maybe they should have been. But scripture is pretty amazing because scripture is known, especially in the midst of the context of its day, for naming women of influence, That's just real. Open up your Bible. You will find time and time and time again these ladies that are just rock stars. So you can't really use that as the excuse, right? There must be a reason why Jairus the official gets a name, but the woman with the issue of blood doesn't, right? Well, I think this is God's way of showing us that he cares, yes, for the famous. God is not anti-people who are recognized, He is for any of his children who will present themselves to him. And so whether you be famous, well-known, everybody knows you. What's up, Jairus? Oh, Jairus. Hey, Jairus. Doesn't matter. Or whether nobody knows your name. This woman, she had an issue of what? Blood. Issues of blood, again, in in the culture of the day. It hurts my heart to say this, but in the culture of the day, she was excommunicated because she had an issue of blood. She was considered unclean by culture. So she was an outcast. And people, when they saw her in this day and age, I thought I was going to be able to say this without crying, but I can't. They would shout at her, unclean, unclean, unclean. That's where she was living. Isn't that painful? Doesn't that suck? Wouldn't you feel like an outcast? Yeah? So, what would your attitude be as an outcast, right? You're probably not going to pull a J. Iris, right? Excuse me, I'm here. Everyone stop. I have arrived. I need your help. No, what does she do? She goes in from behind and sneaks a miracle. Right? That's like the best kind of sneaky dish. You know what I mean? Sneaking miracles, you know? It sounds like a TV show or something. I don't know. I like it. Sneaking miracles, you know? But you can really see something that she, she wanted to go under the radar. You can pick that up as you're reading through this in Scripture. That she, she didn't want to make a big fuss out of everything. But you can even go further. Because of her reaction to what Jesus says here, you can also see that not only was she just like, okay, I don't need to demand the attention in front of, I don't need to be the center of attention. Like old Jay over here, you know? Like I can just sneak in here. Like that's not necessarily bad. You don't have to make a big fluff every time that, that you need something from God. You don't need to vocally interrupt everything and be like, stop everyone, I have a need. That doesn't have to be the case. But your heart towards God does, can you all say does? It does need to be confident in the fact that what you are wanting from God, he wants to do for you. Because if you are not confident of that and you just happen to sneak a miracle, on the other side of that sneaky miracle, you're still going to be feeling sneaky. And you're going to be wondering if this is okay. Is it okay to be blessed like this? Is it okay for God to meet my need? You know, sometimes God blesses us, and on the other side of it, we try to make excuses. Like we, like, start to talk crap about ourselves again. Excuse my French. You know? Knock it off. You're a child of God. He loves you. He heals you. He loves you. He wants to bless you. Period. So, let's read her reaction. Mark 5, 32 and 33. Yeah, let's move on. There we go. But the woman, ready? Fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her. She was what? She was fearing and trembling. She was nervous. She didn't know if this was okay. Ah, Sometimes it's painful to feel what these people felt. 
Ouch. This woman was fearing and trembling. The context and the circumstances of her life have set her up to where even when God blesses her, she's still insecure. She's still insecure about this. And I can understand she's had this issue for 12 years, right? How many of y'all think you might get a little conditioned after 12 years? So she's fearing and she's trembling. And I'm not, I'm not ragging on her for doing that. But I am pointing out something. Jesus goes on to minister to her. Check this out. She was fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth, as if she was confessing something wrong. Like, Jesus, I'm sorry I touched your robe. It was me. What does Jesus say? Daughter. What? What does he call her? Daughter. She went from some outcast with some issue on the sidelines. People didn't like her. They, did, they were disgusted. She went from that to daughter. Man, daughter. Daughter, that's huge. He, in that moment, he shows her a truth that could impact our lives in such a crazy way if only we will grab hold of it. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. You are a child of God, and God wants to take care of his children. For his children to fall back, to recluse, to cut me off out of his influence makes no sense. We are revoking daddy of what daddy wants. Check this out. It goes on. He says, daughter, your faith has made you well. You ready? Go in peace. Go in peace. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Jesus, Jesus, I love, I love, I love that in the midst of all of this, life or death situation is on the line, right? And Jesus is willing to pause for one person who was already healed. He didn't pause to heal her, right? She was already healed. He didn't pause to heal her. He paused to show her her worth and that she can live in his blessing confidently and peacefully. Ain't that cool? blows my mind. So amazing. So you don't have to feel guilty. Don't be ashamed of, don't buy into the false humility that says, oh, my problems are just too big, or my problems don't matter. Man, 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 man. Knock it off. God wants them. Give them to him and watch him work. You want to keep holding on to that stuff, you're going to watch everybody else be blessed from the sidelines, and you're going to enter into a resentful bitterness. That was some fire, but I love you. Seriously, though, you can either, like, sit back from the sidelines being like, uh, everyone else is getting blessed. I'm just not good enough. Man, man, man. That is the exact opposite narrative we need to be saying. Yo, you want me to prove it to you? Yeah. Huh? You want some scripture? Yeah. Yay. Oh, okay, yeah. So, one more thing that I need to get out is don't let comparison of your problem with other people's problems cause you to settle with yours. Okay? Doesn't give God glory to be like, well, their problem's bigger and my problem's small, so God, you know, maybe just take care of that one. What, like he can't take care of all of them? Essentially, by saying that kind of nonsense, you are calling God a wuss. Right? Is that not what you're doing? Like, well, oh God, maybe you could take care of that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just do some time management for you. Right? That is ridiculous. We serve an epic, mind-blowing God who is capable of more than we could even think. That's wild. 
So don't compare your stuff, you know? Don't be like, well, there's a life or death situation on the line here with Jairus' daughter. I have, I mean, I have a real issue. This issue of blood, it's been a 12-year-long issue, but it ain't like I'm going to die tomorrow. Don't do that. If you got a problem, go to the one with solutions. Amen? Okay. Here we go. So Jesus could have kept on walking, let her feel a strange guilt for being blessed. Instead, Jesus, on his way to take care of a life or death situation, pauses to validate this woman. God will pause for you. He will. He will. And you know what I love? I don't know when I say what and what service. So I'm going to say it again. If you already heard this, good. Here it is again. But back then it was like, okay, Jesus, there was one Jesus on the earth, right? Yes, church? Y'all alive? Okay. Do we need to rally? Do we need to shake it up? Everybody take a five-second shake break. Come on, shake it up. Wake up. Wake up. Mary, I love you. Queen rallier. So good. Goodness gracious. And so, we can go in peace. Uh, Again, we're not stealing from God by asking for a miracle. We are giving him the opportunity he wants, right? Scripture in Acts says, in in, in the book of Acts, I think it's 20, I should look, yep, 20, says, you heard Jesus say this, it's like saying what Jesus said in Scripture, it is more blessed to give than to receive. How many of y'all think that might be true about our God? How many of y'all think it blesses him to bless Right? You're not stealing from him. You are not an inconvenience to him. Present your need. It's what he wants and watch him work. He loves to do it. He's blessed by you giving him an opportunity to bless you. That's dope. Amen, brother. So, reading on Mark 5.35. Bad news, y'all. Oops. (laughs) Oops. <laughs> Who just said oops? Because that was, that was legendary. <laughs> this seems like a really big oops. <laughs> so while Jesus was still speaking, some people, Jairus' homies, came from the house of the synagogue and they said to Jairus, your daughter has what? She's died. As Scott Werner says, oops. Why trouble the teacher anymore? Okay, so now we're in a unique place, right? Because now here's Jairus. Jesus said he was going to do something for Jairus, right? And Jesus is on his way to do something for Jairus. Somebody else with a different need comes, presents it. Jesus meets that need seemingly at the expense of Jairus, right? Do you think that's how God works? Huh? That's good that you're saying no. Because sometimes when we're waiting for God to do something in our life, we're going to see other people blessed in the meantime. We're going to see God answer some people's prayers in the meantime. We might be there immediately. Our blood is dried up, people, too. But sometimes it might be like it's going to take a little time. And when we see someone else get blessed, don't shut down. Even if the situation grows to looking impossible. Hey, y'all, did you forget who we serve? Is he not the God of the impossible? Is he not the God of the impossible? Come on, man. Like, like whatever you think he can't do, he can do. That's our God. He is awesome. Do not limit him. I love you. Don't limit him. So, I mean, I'm not hating on these guys, right? Like, she's dead. What are you going to do, right? Like, they didn't know about this stuff. They didn't know Jesus was just going to be like, I don't care. (laughs) Like, Like, she's dead. So what, you know? 
Basically, what Jesus goes on to say, I'm going to paraphrase it just for the sake of time, but basically, Jesus, what he says is, Jairus, hold up, man. Don't fear. Can y'all say don't fear? Don't Don't give in to fear. Just don't. If y'all ever feel like fear is fluffing up in you, yeah? Y'all ever get that fluffy fear going? Yeah, it's gross, right? You're like, (laughs) it's not a, it's not good. It ain't pretty. I feel like I wish we had slow-mo on our camera. I would like slow it down in the video to show how unpretty it really is, you know? Like fear ain't pretty. So don't receive it. It's not for you. Just don't sign for that package. And maybe, maybe you're like, well, I already have let a little bit of it in. Well, guess what? You have more Holy Spirit in you than you do fear. And let him do something with that fear. Perfect love. Listen, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the, (laughs) it was inevitable. The love of God (laughs) is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Yeah? Yeah? So the love of God is in your heart because Holy Spirit has been given to you. Scripture also says perfect love casts out Fear. So the Spirit of God inside of you makes fear go bye-bye. If it rears its head, let Holy Spirit do something. Say, come on in, Holy Spirit. I know you're with me, but I need to see your influence in this situation. Amen? Amen. Woo! Okay. So, Jesus goes, right? And, like, back in the day, like, when people died, like, you know how we make us, like, a... We have funerals and stuff like that, right? Man, the, the Jewish people, they, they really had some funerals. You know, they were like hired mourners, for real. People that were like hired to like tear off Tarzan style their clothes. I mean, not like all their clothes, you know, the overclothes, you know? But still, they would like tear their clothes. There's musicians there. It's a whole escapade, right? And Jesus, again, he's like, Jairus, don't fear. Believe. I'm still coming with you. Can you imagine that walk? Can you imagine that walk with Jesus? Like, what am I about to see? (laughs) You know? And then you show up and like, you're kind of feeling almost like borderline foolish, right? Because here's this whole crowd of mourners, these people who are already aware of the fact that your daughter's dead, right? And Jesus is like, hey, y'all, break it up. She just sleeping. That's what he says, for real. He's like, everybody, uh, hold up. She's just sleeping. I'll be right back. You know? And so he goes in, and he only lets a couple of the disciples in and the parents, and they go in there, and he basically says, I don't, it's interesting. Sometimes, I'm sure I'll preach a sermon about it sometime, but like, he uses different language. He says, Talitha kum, which means get up and Little girl, I say to you, get up. How does Talitha Kum mean that? Goodness gracious. That's like subtitles on movies. Y'all ever see that? They say like one word and there's like a sentence. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Just like, watch me. Okay. Um, little girl, I say to you, get up immediately. Can y'all say immediately? immediately? The girl got up and began to walk for she was 12 years old. I find that clarification very funny. They felt like they had to. We might be like, wait, how old? Was this a baby that was just like, I'm up and walking, you know? They were like, no, 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 no. Guys, it wasn't that that was the miracle. She was 12, she could walk. Jesus raised her from the dead, you know? I love that clarification, it's ridiculous. Because you could have gotten it wrong and immediately they were completely astounded. Look at this baby, you know, like, anyways. (laughs) so Jesus interrupts this wild morning party against all odds enters in and what does he do he does what he said he was going to do he blesses his child Jairus not because he was a fancy official and he did not bless the woman who we used to call the woman with the issue of blood now we're going to call her the daughter who was healed by Jesus Yeah? So these two, he did not interact with them in accordance with the titles the world had given them. I don't care what your title is. I don't care how renowned or how repudiated you are. 
You are a child of God. And God loves you, and he wants to take care of your need just as much as he wants to take care of everyone else's needs. Who is the one that touched me? That's what he said. Who is the one? In the midst of this giant crowd, are y'all going to be the one? Oh. Are y'all going to be the one? Do y'all want to be the one that touches Jesus? Good. I think we're done. Yeah. So, some takeaways. Can we do a quick review? Yeah? If you got like a pizza in the oven, that was a terrible decision. Because pizzas take like 20 minutes to cook. I don't know what you were thinking. Turkeys? I don't know how long turkeys take. But just don't do that. Especially not on days I'm preaching. Y'all know how this goes. Here's some takeaways. I would, I would encourage you, if you're writing stuff down, this would probably be good stuff to write down. Because this is just like, <laughs> stuff. One, it is not selfish to ask for God's attention. I'm going to say that again. It is not selfish to ask for God's attention. Two, God is blessed to bless you. God is blessed to bless you. God bless you. Do not compare your problem with other problems and settle in yours. Did you hear me? Do not compare your problem with other problems and settle in yours. You can receive God's blessing in peace. You can receive God's blessing in peace. You don't have to be insecure about it. And lastly, the world's labels are irrelevant. They don't matter. I love that. I love that so much. It opens my eyes. Look around. And don't see people through your filter. See them through God's filter. They're children. You know? They're children. We're so quick to put labels on people, aren't we? Just look at them and go, you're a child of God. yippee ki Let's go. Amen? Awesome, church. You blessed? Good. Can we live this stuff? Oh, my gosh. Y'all know you got Holy Spirit's help, yeah? Okay, now I'm going to ask you that. Can we live this stuff? Yeah. Awesome. Let's pray. Thank you for listening to Liberty Christian Center's podcast. To partner with this ministry or for any additional information, please visit libertychristiancenter.org.